O Most High, Yahweh, we humbly come before you on this day in your son's name, our high priest, to whom you gave an oath and a promise concerning our salvation. Father, as we read Hebrews chapter 7, we pray for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, forgive our trespasses and teach us obedience unto you. Please, Father, discipline us in your love and not in your anger. We come to you in the name of your Son, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Shalom, Israel. Unto the heirs of the promise of salvation. The Heavenly Father has given you two immutable things. Immutable meaning unchanging. Our Father gave His Word, and He cannot lie. Israel, you have a forerunner that goes before you. Our Lord, the Son of the Highest, He has been here before. The scripture says that even Yahawashai made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Let's talk about Melchizedek. The book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High Yah, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, being first by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. This Melchizedek is the king of of Salem. Salem is a place in Jerusalem which is known as the city of peace. This is why we say unto you, Israel, Shalom. Peace be unto you, Israel. This Melchizedek is the king of peace. He is the king of righteousness. In him there is no sin. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God. This Melchizedek is made like the Son of God. Our Lord has been here before. It was him in the beginning where the scripture says, let us make man in our image. He is the us. He walked this earth as Melchizedek. He walked this earth as the one the world calls Jesus Christ. Our Lord has been here before. This Melchizedek, he met Abraham when he returned from the slaughter of the kings. Let's jump up a couple of chapters. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Verses 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. When Abraham, our forefather, when he walked this earth, he walked with Melchizedek, the high priest made like unto the Son of God. Israel, you never know when you are entertaining angels unaware. When your forefather Abraham walked this earth, he walked with the Son of the Most High God. Did he know 
that he was walking with the Son of God. One can only wonder, but what we do know is that he knew that this Melchizedek was the high priest unto the Most High Yah because he tied unto him. Let's read about it. The book of Genesis chapter 14. When Abraham returned from the slaughter of the kings, he tied unto this Melchizedek unto this high priest made like the Son of God. Genesis chapter 14, verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elessar, Kedolomar, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Berah, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shema, and Shemivar, king of Zevoim, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. All these were joined together in the Vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Kedolomar, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Kedolomar, and the kings that were with him, and and smote the Raphims and Ashtoreth, Kirnaim, and Zuzims, and Ham, and Emens, and Sheba, Kirathim, and the Horites in the Mount Seir unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to Enmashpat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amari that dwelt in Hazon Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar, and they joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim, with Kedolomar, king of Elam, and with Tidal, king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elessar, four kings with five. And the veil of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amory, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Anar, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hovah, which is on the left hand of Damasek. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him, after his return from the slaughter of Kedolomar, and of the kings that were with him, in the valley of Sheba which is the king's dell. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High Yah. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High Yah, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High Yah, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto Yahweh, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Anar, Eshkel, and Mamre, 
Let them take their portion. When four kings went to war with the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they took Abraham's nephew Lot into captivity, Abram gathered his trained men in his own house. The scripture says 318 men, and he made war with those kings. And he returned his nephew Lot, all the women and all the children and all the goods that had been taken. Upon Abram's return, he was met by Melchizedek. And the scripture says, that Melchizedek blessed Abraham. This Melchizedek was the king of the city of peace in Jerusalem. He was the high priest of the Most High Yah. Notice that in verse 20, Melchizedek said, And blessed be the Most High Yah, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand and he gave him tithes of all. This Melchizedek, he blessed Abram. When Abram walked this earth, the son of Yah walked it with him. How special are you, Israel, that the Heavenly Father sends his angels unto you. You never know when you are entertaining angels unaware. We know for a certainty that Abram knew that this was the high priest unto the Most High Yah because he tithed a tenth of all that he returned unto Melchizedek. He knew that this was the high priest of the Most High Yah. Whether or not he knew that this was the son of Yah, one can only wonder. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 7, and we'll pick it up at verse 4. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Now consider how great Melchizedek was, that your forefather Abraham, that he tithed unto this Melchizedek. He knew that this was the high priest of the Most High, Yahweh. Verse 5, And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. There are 12 tribes in the nation of Yisrael. And of the 12 tribes, the tribe of Levi were counted as the priest unto the Most High Yah. These are the sons of Aharon. And they took a 10th part from all of the people. Let's go to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 18, let's start at verse 20. And Yahweh spake unto Aharon, thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part in thine inheritance among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their inequity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. Of the twelve tribes of Israel, the sons of Aharon, the Levites, they had no land inheritance. Their role and their function 
was to be priest unto the Most High Yah. Their service was unto the Most High Yah. No other tribe within the nation of Israel could come close to the tabernacle lest they bared sin and they died. And so therefore, the remaining tribes of Israel gave a tenth part to the sons of Levi, to the Levites, to the sons of Aharon. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter seven, verse six. But he whose descent is not counted from them received the tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. The Levites performed the service unto Yah. They were the priests unto Yah, and they received tithes from the people. But Abraham tithed unto this Melchizedek who was not from the tribe of Levi. This is what the scriptures is saying. Verse seven, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Let there be no confusion. There is no contradiction. But the one who does the blessing is greater than the one who is being blessed. Remember, Israel, that when Abraham returned from the slaughter of the kings, this Melchizedek, made like unto the Son of God, this Melchizedek, who was the high priest unto the Most High Yah, the King of Peace, he came out and he blessed Abraham. The one who gives the blessing is greater than the one that is being blessed. This is what the scriptures are saying. Verse eight, Hebrews chapter seven, verse eight. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. The sons of Levi who received tithes from the people, they received the tenth, the tenth part from the people. They lived and they died. They lived and they died. But this Melchizedek, who received tithes from your forefather Abraham, he had no descent. He had no mother. He had no father. He has no beginning. The scripture says he has no end. He liveth forever. Hebrews chapter seven, verse nine. And as I may say so, Levi also who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Abraham is the father of the faith. He is all the way in the book of Genesis. He is 2000 years approximately before the Son of God came into this earth as the one the world calls Jesus Christ. He's approximately 2000 BC. Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, Jacob had 12 sons, which became known as the 12 tribes of Yisrael, of whom the Levites come through. The scriptures is saying that if I may say so, the sons of Levi, the Levites, who are the priests of the Most High Yah, what the scriptures is saying is in a sense, the sons of Levi, they tithe unto Melchizedek because when their father Abraham met Melchizedek and he tithed unto Melchizedek, the sons of Levi were still in the loins of Abraham. Hebrews chapter seven, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aharon? Israel, what if I told you that religion is a lie? What if I told you that your father, the Most High Yahweh, he knew that the priesthood would become corrupted 
What if I told you that from the beginning, he established a perfect priesthood in his son, Jehoshaphat? If the Levitical priesthood were perfect, for under that priesthood, the children of Israel received the law. If it were perfect, there would have been no need for the son of the Most High Yah to come in the order of Melchizedek and establish a perfect priesthood. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices, for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Under the Levitical priesthood, blood had to be shed to atone for your sin. The wage or the price of sin that you must pay, Israel, is in blood. Your father is nothing to play with. When we sin, we die. Under that Levitical priesthood, the blood of bulls and goats was shed rather than your blood so that you could go before the Most High God. If the blood of bulls and goats was perfect, then would not those sacrifices cease to be offered? But rather, you sinned, you sacrificed the blood of bulls and goats. You sinned, you sacrificed the blood of bulls and goats. You do it today, Israel. You sin, and then you go before the Most High Yah and ask for forgiveness. You sin, and then you go before the Most High Yah and you ask for forgiveness. You sin, and then you go before the Most High Yah and you ask for forgiveness. It did not purge your consciousness. It did not take away sin. But the son of the highest, but the son of the highest said, but a body thou hast prepared in me. He was perfect. He was sinless. And he shed his blood that you may live, that you may go before the Most High Yah. He shed it one time. That's love, Hebrews. From the beginning to the end of this book, the scripture says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews chapter 7. And we'll pick it up at verse 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident 
that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moshe spake nothing concerning priesthood. That Levitical priesthood was not perfect, and therefore a change was necessary. Our Father established a perfect priesthood in the Son of the Highest. We no longer shed the blood of bulls and goats. He shed his blood one time that you may live. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. The priesthood was established amongst the Levites. But this Melchite said, this son of God, he did not come from the tribe of Levi. It is evident that our Lord, the one the world calls Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yahawashai, Hamashiach, it's evident that he sprang from the tribe of Judah. of which Moshe never spake a word concerning the priesthood. Hebrews chapter seven, verse 15. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life that after the likeness of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, that after the likeness of Melchizedek, there ariseth Yahawashai, Hamashiach, who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Those Levitical priests they were carnal, they had sin, and they died. But our Lord, Yahawashai, Hamashiach, he was sinless, he was righteous, and he is endless. Hebrews chapter seven, verse 17. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Our Lord, the Most High, gave his word unto his Son that thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 18. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For there is truly a canceling. That word disannulling means to cancel. There was a canceling of the Levitical priesthood going before because it was weak and not profitable. You continue to shed blood and then you send. You continue to shed blood and you send. You do it today, Israel. Verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto Yah. The sacrificial law, it made nothing perfect. It did not purge your consciousness, but the son of the highest, he shed his blood and he gave you grace that you may live and that you may go before the most high Yah. You have an opportunity, Israel, to purge your consciousness of sin. Verse 20, and inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made 
priests. For those priests were made without an oath, but this was with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Those Levites, the Levitical priesthood, was made without an oath. The Most High gave Moses a commandment to take the sons of Aharon from the tribes of Levi and make them priests unto me. That was a commandment. But with the Son of the Highest, unto you the heirs of salvation, the Most High Yah gave an oath. He gave a promise. He gave his word. Psalms chapter 110 verse 1 Yahweh said unto my Lord Sit thou at my right hand Until I make thine enemies thy footstool Yahweh shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Yahweh hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yahweh sits at the right hand of the Father. The Most High Yah said unto Yahweh, Sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Yahweh hath sworn and will not repent. He is not a man that could lie. He has given you his word. He has given you two immutable things. You, the heirs of salvation. He gave his word and he cannot lie. He said unto his son, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 22. By so much was Yahawashai made a surety of a better testament. Those Levitical priests, they lived and they died, and they were sinful just as you are, Israel. But the Son of the Highest, he was without sin, and he lives forever. He has a promise and an oath from the Most High Yah, from his Father, that you are a priest unto me forever. He is a surety and a better testament. Verse 23, and they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. There were many priests. The Levite priests, they lived and they died. They lived and they died. But Yahweh, he liveth forever. His priesthood is unchanging. Verse 25. Wherefore he is able to save, also to save them to the uttermost that come unto Yah by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Our Lord, Yahweh, he shed his blood for you one time that you may live. He is able to save you, Yisrael. The scripture says that he shall save his people from their sins. We must come unto the Most High Yah by him and through him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for you. He goes before you with the Father. 
to atone, to make things right with you and the Most High Yah, to give you life that you may stand before his Father. That's love, Yisrael. Verse 26, for such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. Now this is the type of priest that we need. This is the type of high priest that we need, Israel. For such an high priest became us, the son of the highest. He became flesh and he came down from heaven and walked among his brethren. He walked amongst your forefather, Abraham, and he was holy, harmless, undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. The first heaven is here on earth where we dwell in Israel and the second heaven is starry space and the third heaven is there where Yah dwells and he sits at the right hand of the Father. He is made higher than the heavens. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. Those Levitical priests, they had to offer up sacrifices not only for your sins, but for their own. Yahawashai did not need to do that. He is holy. He is righteous. He was sinless. And he offered his blood that you may live one time. That's love, Hebrews. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. Those Levite priests had sinned and they were given a commandment. But this Yahawashai, he was made high priest with an oath, which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. He was made high priest with an oath, with a promise from the words of your father. Yahweh, he is our high priest forevermore. Shabbat Shalom, Israel.